Welcome to Key. Opera style. <laughs> you oh, that was that was so pretty. Her, I have said we need to do a Christmas <laughs> album together because I have such a full like deep voice but could still hit the high notes but it's a deep but hers is just like a bell ringing of gorgeousness well you're the alto to my soprano i am i'm lauren jones the alto i'm to simona soprano. roy <laughs> <laughs> um roy is the soprano to my alto well i did study opera for a really long time I since know. i was 11 years old i studied it a little bit too which is also weird that like we both studied that that's not a normal thing no it's not a regular it's not a normal thing to have occurrence. local teachers like <laughs> and all that fun stuff but yeah this is who we are guys this is who we are that's right uh so it is uh another week of snacking another day another dollar uh who knows when this will air <laughs> sometime in february yeah, yeah this one i think the good. end of this february february or march maybe even because i don't been, know it's yeah. it's it's somewhere. It's going to be after Valentine's Day. We don't Right. Know. <laughs> but in reality, Valentine's Day is Manana. tomorrow, which I don't even, doesn't affect me <laughs> one affects, bit. I don't think it affects a lot of people. Yeah. I, it's, I don't have, I don't have hate for it. There's some people that have like real hate for it. Like, oh, Valentine's Day made by the greeting card company. Blah, yeah. blah, blah. It's just like, okay, so it's made, is a manufactured holiday. But yeah, wasn't there like an, we know there's an actual guy, Valentine, whatever. The fat baby that flies around. <laughs> oh, the little Cupid, Cupid cherub. is the funniest thing. Um, <laughs> but I don't have hate for it. I, you know, I just think of it as like a great day to have chocolate. Same. Or it should be chocolate day or whatever like because then pizza company started making pizzas and oh states. that's right and, like, yeah my friend Sonia always gets a pizza heart thing so like that often makes me happy yeah I feel like it's a good food holiday like to be honest it's yeah. a good snack we maybe could do an audible in the future or something on Valentine's snacks like right be down we'll do it later so that when everything's on sale we'll buy it okay perfect <laughs> we ain't paying for full price for those heart boxes bit well it I read a meme that was great uh it was like if you are the type of person who eats uh conversation hearts then you should have no problems with what is in our vaccine for COVID because conversation yeah. hearts are disgusting. Shock. They're old. They're usually in, in somebody's pant pocket, you know, yeah. <laughs> like just rolling around. So if you can eat those, you should it's be able shock. to be fine with the vaccine. It's a hundred percent chalk. It's, it, it's not good. I mean, it's very yeah. cute looking, but it's just, it's, you know, it's like a big Necco wafer. It's a fat heart shaped Necco, Necco wafer. wafer. It does have a variety of tastes like the, the pack. I haven't had one since I was a child. So maybe we have to do throwback. I, to do a Necco wafer. I, oh I was, a, there's certain ones I did not like. And there's sure. ones I did like, which ha is how I know there were flavors <laughs> well yeah i just like was like oh you're giving me a necco wafer get out of here they have <laughs> well, just get they out have, like a licorice taste uh too. and that, that's you know you know and me i'm only recently converted to very sugary sweet licorice <laughs> that is strawberry flavored from australia does so, anybody want to guess what my favorite valentine's candy is <laughs> Um, does any meaning me that, any, there's only a, one other person here or whoever wants to comment? Uh, let's see. W uh, I think it's some, like a Ferrero Rocher in <laughs> <Yes>. a heart. <laughs> any for every season, Ferrero <laughs> Rocher for all seasons. Um, yeah, well, I, I know that that's your favorite. I just like, um, I love those little like Russell Stover's or yeah. Whitman samplers, heart shaped things in, um, at my office. They, they're so sweet. Like on Valentine's Day, they leave us little boxes of chocolate on my, our desk. My parents usually, my dad will usually buy them for all of us, which I think is very cute. That's and then very my cute. mom usually does like some kind of wrapped gorgeousness. This year though, because I moved guys. Oh yeah, look background. at her background. It's amazing. I'm, at, I'm in Midtown Atlanta. And, her apartment um, is sick. It is gorgeous. 
It's really nice. It's, co- it's cozy. It's comfortable. And I nice. has great views, floor to ceiling windows mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and like huge closets. You're just really looking at yeah. the other part of the building. But if we were in a different corner, it is smaller than other apartments I've lived in in a while because girls looking to buy a house, too. So, we've yeah, gotta, yeah, we've no, you are doing I, I mean, and. It's it's just a great apartment. That's and it's Thanks. perfect for you at the moment. Thanks, Mama. Yes, and we're hoping the mom is a year. <laughs> like I don't move out of this. No, for a year. the mom has to be a little long. Yeah, it can't just be a short mom. Because we had too many moms <laughs> last year. There was too many short women. So that's really what happened with me this week. Um, and it was it was a little horrific and it's traumatic and moving has that uh, element to it. But I survived and. Um, I'm, I'm feeling healthy and I'm sleeping on my, like, oh, I love my mattress and it's been in storage. And so like sleeping on my mattress is making me mat sleeping is better than sex in some cases. Lauren really, really loves her sleep. I love my sleep. And I, I do love my bed. I recently bought, um, these tensile tensile is made out of eucalyptus, uh, Mm. sheets because of all of my allergies. So I looked up like, what are the most, you know, allergen friendly sheets. So I changed my sheets of, so I put it on my comforter, like since it's a duvet cover and just a mattress cover and a pillow sham. And it's just Uh like, it is heaven, like the right sheets. And I'm a hot sleeper. I don't know about you. So I'm always melting. I don't wear a lot of clothes when I sleep. I can't. Yeah, me either. Um, So that I do recommend tensile sheets. They are cooling and they are cool to the touch. And of course, I'm still a little, sometimes I do get a little sweaty, but it's definitely more breathable. But yeah, back it. to your bed. So just uh, say, it's just delicious. a comfortable bed is is really important. As you are, as we are both in our 30s, we really know yeah. that it's important. And I've been doing so much because I didn't really take a lot of time off of my day job. So I've been doing so much that. And I've been recording the other podcast and this. So there's just been like a lot going on. So I've just been out. It's like been work and this and editing and whatever. And then like, you know, building furniture. (laughs) And I'm like watching a Ranger game and then passing out. That's been my life as of late. So, but what's going on with you? Simona has had some doctor's appointments. She had some DMV visits. She's got, we're going to try not to, we're not trying to jam pack too much in this, but she's got a lot. I do. (laughs) <laughs> just I feel like I've had two really annoying weeks because uh the DMV was got better in New Jersey I would say like f- five to seven years ago I think whoever our governor was at that point I, I don't want to say it's crazy whoever decided to really revamp the whole system so it was efficient but now with COVID it has gotten way worse I will say that so I renewed my license online like a responsible individual in November and I I remember her birthday's in January so she was like ahead ahead of the curve yeah as soon as I got the notice in the mail that you can do this I did it because I didn't you know I don't ever want to forget to do something and guess what it never came never came in the mail. So I called the number that they told me to call, which is only one number in the, for the whole state of New Jersey, <laughs> probably That's somebody in Trenton. People in that state. Um, and so I was on hold for three and a half hours. And yesterday when I actually went to the DMV, a woman told me that she was on hold because she did three different phones and called the number at the same time. She was on hold for over seven hours before somebody got to her and I just don't have time for seven hours of being no, on but hold. you ended up being on hold for how long three and a half yeah so Crazy. it's it's and I was just like I had it on my speakerphone you know and I was doing work for that amount of time but whatever so then so I couldn't get a hold of somebody to tell me like how to get like another license through their phone or their email so I was like okay I got to make an appointment to go in and the appointment was safe? founding like wonderful thing that the DMV did do eventually I think all over the U.S. was make appointments appointments. that was a big like hot find hot yeah like getting the appointment so that was a bonus that you could at least do that right right and at first it was mid-March but then I went to another 
place and I was able for to lesser, get out of Philadelphia. The lesser desirable DMV location. Uh, yeah. Well, yeah, for sure. So then I go, I see there's uh, a bunch of people standing outside. You cannot go inside. Nobody's telling you any information. There's no line. And you're just like, why the fuck did I even make an appointment? Because this is like mayhem. And then when they do come out, they are so rude. I know that they probably have to deal with a lot. It's like a lot of pressure and like people are asking questions out of turn, but the attitude, as soon as they walked out, I was just, I was frightened to be honest, you know? And so then I like was able to tell my appointment time, whatever I go in and, um, I didn't have to stand outside too long. And then I find out that because I renewed online, they, they couldn't reissue one there. And the guy said, why don't you go sit over there and go online and order a duplicate? Why don't you? <laughs> that is what I would have said. And uh, the whole point of me going there was that I already paid a certain amount to get this stupid new license. Yeah. And then I had to like, I didn't want to like argue with him. They were all so mean that I was like, you know, fuck this. I'm just going to go and do that. So it wasn't that much. It was like 1150. Fine. I spend more on snacks, obviously. So Obvi. <laughs> So I but did principal. Well, yeah, I didn't even have to go there and, and take time off of work, which I honestly, I would have much rather worked yesterday. Um, and it was just really annoying. And that that's, that was the solution. Like, oh, you renewed online. We can't do anything in person. How is, how does that make sense? How does that make sense? It doesn't. And then I found out recently that I'm too old for LASIK. <laughs> Did I tell you oh, this? Oh no, that was oh so it was eye doctor yesterday. No, was, this was eye doctor was like a week ago, and oh, it was okay. bad news. I mean, it was just like LASIK. Your eyes change when you're forty, and okay, wait, wait, two seconds though. Yeah, my friend Ashley in, she's in Charlotte. Mm -hmm. She just had LASIK, and she's forty. Well, I mean. <laughs> It depends on what kind of eyesight she eyes? has. Okay. So I'm nearsighted. And so essentially, if I got it now, which in three years, I'd be 40 at the age of 40 or like, you know, it's not like it's a countdown to my birthday, but, you know, right around that time, because I got LASIK, my nearsightedness would go away and I'd have to wear reading glasses. So I'd only have like perfect vision for three years. Okay. So, so I could like, do it, but like, why would I just not worth it? Okay. Yeah. Like, why would I just do it just to have reading glasses when I'm not going to need reading glasses for probably until I'm 60? I'm petrified of LASIK. Because I just would have thought that by now they would have had better technology, yeah. right? Like, that's what I always think when I like go into some new fangled thing. I'm like, oh, it's 2021. They'll fix everything. No, there's but still ways things, to go. Basic in the DMV in New Jersey, we already know or not. It doesn't matter. Well, and allergy shots too. So I started doing allergy shots and the course of my, all of my allergy shots. Well, first it's weekly for 36 weeks, which is A six to eight weeks, months. Guys. And then monthly for five years. That's how long I have to take allergy shots. Yeah. Basically for the rest of your life. I mean, I think that when your allergies start. And again, we've talked about this where now all of a sudden I have a shellfish allergy in the last year, which is devastating to me. It's not like the worst allergy I have out of all my allergies, but you should be carrying an EpiPen actually. I know because they say that like, I don't know if it's the law, but doctors say that if you have any sort of food allergy, you should carry an EpiPen because I, I found out that I'm allergic to soy. Yeah. It's just one of those things where it's like, it, and and they can't tell you why it's developed. Like no. a lot of things. It's just like, but okay, it's probably because it. our earth is falling apart and we have, everything is just affecting us. And like how many pesticides have we ingested in our lives? A billion. A billion. <laughs> That's why anyway, we, that's why Simone and I look so preserved. <laughs> we just eat formaldehyde a little bit every week without knowing it. Yeah, we're eating whatever we put on our grass. Basically. It's just whenever you talk about our preservation or we talk about formaldehyde, which has happened a couple of times. Um, <laughs> yeah, I think I, I, think um, I talked about it last week. Yeah, I, I always think of Mrs. Doubtfire when um, the little girl is like, Granny smells funny. And then like Robin Williams like, that's the formaldehyde. Yeah. 
And as a child, I just never understood what that meant. I knew what it meant because our we have a family that owns a funeral home. <laughs> and so it's a good mom, business. I feel a business. My mom also like tells stories about how she used to ride in a hearse. My mom is an interesting cat. Yeah. <laughs> um, I would have been terrified, but she apparently lives my girl in real life. And so I don't think I would be terrified. I would. I would. I would be like, oh, this is interesting. I, I mean, maybe creepy. as a kid, you don't realize it as much. Yeah. Well, I remember when she told me that story, I was like, I mean, that sounds <laughs> terrifying. Um, <clears throat> it is what it is. Do we want to go into snacking gone wrong? Yeah, let's do it. Okay. So I've been doing a lot of research on this lately, so I have feel like so many things to pick from. But I found down this uh, BB hole tea trap, or BBC, sorry, tea trap. <laughs> BB hole. <laughs> That's on some kind of porn. A BBC News tea trap. I love the BBC. Yes. And um, and all of and so I'm not going to go into like the intense details of each of these, but they are all mishaps that happened with food or around food that ended up having to cancel musical tours because. <laughs> okay. Yeah, because the musical guests had an issue. The first one that I think is the most pot like ta- uh, bleh. The first one I think is the most uh, commonplace that maybe some of you have heard um, and also relative to one of our most popular episodes last year, which was Takis and uh, Doritos and Doritos. Um, this is about Lil Xan eating. I don't even know who that hot- is. Oh, all right. I'm going to. It's that guy. He is. He's one. Of he's the ones- white. He's white. <laughs> I think he might be like Mexican too. He's okay. one of those uh, artists that wears that has a lot of tattoos on his face that isn't Post mm, Malone, right? That is um, such a good look. Uh, <laughs> and um, he's definitely like maybe twenty one. Like he's very young. Mm, um, that's an even better yeah. knowledge that at twenty one his face is covered with tattoos. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. Um. And. Look him up if you don't know who he is. Um, he's in, he's interesting. He's like I th- I feel like he try he looks tough and then he sounds kind of like like his music is like a little more mellow. He's a rapper, but I feel like it's that mellowy rap, you know. Okay. So and like he, Drakeish, like in his feelings. No, like like somewhere between like a Billie Eilish and a Post Malone. Okay, kind got of it, got vibe. it, got it. Yeah. Um, and uh, he got popular. This was from 2018, this article. Um, but yeah, so this is, but this goes to what we talked about, about the Takis too. <laughs> like kids were eating so many of them <laughs> that they were having to like get their gall- gallbladders taken out and all these kinds yeah, of things. Yeah. And like I'm sure they have developed food allergies. They probably <laughs> have. So now this guy's name is Lil Xan, which is a reference for Xanax, of course. And his oh, group, so it's with an X. It's with an X, and um, <laughs> you know his group, his group is called the Xanarchy and whatever. So this kid obviously has had um, bouts with drugs, but he was so the irony is he was hop- hospitalized not because of drugs, but for eating too many hot Cheetos. Um, which, How many did this person eat? I feel like these kids and he had to just, cancel a tour for it. Like, be responsible. I feel like these kids are just eating these uh, hot, spicy things every day, and they either have diarrhea or gallstones. It's like, insane. oh my god, yeah, like it's getting sick. S- like, yeah. oh my god, he said I was I in the hospital, <laughs> not due to to any drugs but i guess i ate too many hot cheetos and it ripped something in my stomach open so i puked a a blood and that's what sent him to the hospital well isn't that like doesn't he didn't he get an ulcer then you know isn't that what it's a lesion in your stomach right my god so there's that one then oh that just makes me (laughs) mad Then like, what an I, idiot! In 1997, um, on the Harvest Moon, or no, it's the Harvest Moon singer. But on 1997, Neil Young's uh, European tour. Oh God, <laughs> he <laughs> he um, he was making a, a sandwich, a, a ham sandwich, and he sliced his finger, and it had, oh. and he had to cancel the tour. 
So he said, I, he probably couldn't play guitar. Right. And he's a good guitarist. So like, sure. Yeah. That's like it. You know, he can't not play guitar while he's performing. So he said, I, I have eaten the thing in one piece. If I had known that cutting it in half would have jeopardized the tour. Um, He said, (laughs) what a a weird statement. It's macaroni and cheese from now on. Yeah. But what if he burns his tongue? Huh? Huh? Neil? Well, you know, there's that. I mean, and then the last <laughs> he should just not eat anything <laughs> or the fasting. moral of the story is if you're Neil Young, can somebody just like make him a yeah, like sandwich? why was he making his <laughs> own sandwich? He's just like an everyday person making oh, his what a sandwich. great guy. He's like the antithesis of little Zan Xanax. Yeah. <laughs> and then the last one, I mean, this this one, I think was, well, I don't know. They all seem pretty tragic, but this one maybe was could have been the worst traffic. Uh, Morrissey from the Smiths, who I, I uh, adore for, as from like a musical perspective, they probably have all done terrible things at this point. I'm afraid to tell, say I like anybody because. Oh, yeah, you can't. The Me Too <laughs> movement. Like, <laughs> Not this yeah. day and age. Everybody sucks. Exactly. But um, in 2013, he had to scrap nine dates of a South American tour after a series uh, of bout with oh serious bout with food poisoning mm. he described the circumstances in a typically melodramatic statement i can't give words to the sorrow i feel about the loss of perfect peru oh black cloud <laughs> <laughs> such as the victorious uplifting welcome of lima love um the contaminated jinx had its way via a very simple restaurant meal of penne pasta and tomato. So he was definitely like delirious while he went on that stage. Yeah. Or he's just such a true artist. He wrote another song about his own poisoning, (laughs) but it was the penne pasta that, uh, maybe the moral of the story is you shouldn't freaking order penne pasta in like Peru. You should be ordering, you know, the food yeah. that they're known no, for. I think no penne pasta in Peru. I think Neil Young, anyone who is a guitarist playing an instrument should not be cutting ham. No. And making their or own. Or they sandwich. should not be cutting any food. Like spoon feed them for God's sakes. Right. Get some applesauce. <laughs> and then and then the other uh. one. Stop eating the don't eat that every day. Like moderation is what we need to be focusing on. <laughs> Well, okay. For young people, your frontal uh, lobe is not fully uh, formed until you're 25. So he doesn't have much impulse control. I mean, that's just a fact. It's science. So I can understand why Lil San overdosed on hot Cheetos. I I mean, it's an idiotic thing because I had never overdosed on anything at that age, but some people... It's not a real food. And I think everyone (sighs) needs to understand that... It's not a real food. Yeah. Like we, and again, we endorse all the snacks that are not real food. We even admit they're fake tasting and we still love them sometimes, but I mean, we're not eating this stuff every day. Like that's the the kick. Or if we are eating it every day, it's not in copious amounts like that. Right. To the point where we're like breaking our stomach lining and getting an ulcer or whatever. Oh my God. So anyway, um, so that's this week's snacking gone going wrong or whatever we're calling this little <laughs> snacking snacking gone wrong and um i uh yeah i still love this little segment because i'm learning so much <laughs> it, it's it's fascinating and i have to say i have kind of a food gone wrong but it's not funny it's actually serious yeah there's so, also a lot of those out there so i'm trying to keep these a i know i'm not keeping it light because yeah. i just want so basically there was a new report that said that there are really high levels of lead in baby food they found like from gerber like pure whatever and yeah it's terrifying because it's actually um it's not really regulated as other foods are which is crazy right. to me and it they found higher levels of lead in the baby food than in drinking water. So Whoa. if you got a baby, I know it's extra work, but make your own baby food. I think that that's just, that's the only option you can. Yeah. And that's so hard, you know, like you trust these companies to like nourish your children who have developing brains. And also studies have showed that like higher levels of food when, when you're a baby, like high le- higher levels of food, higher levels of lead in food when you're a baby um, can 
make can have kids and young adults develop more criminality and again probably has to do with impulse control and like Ted Bundy ate a lot of lead or something I mean you know it's we can make a correlation. I don't know if the causation we can pull from that, but it's interesting that that's what studies are saying. Like this is one of the reasons why lead is really harmful. So uh, just make puree some organic carrots, you know, yeah. it's scary. Get a Vitamix, man. It's scary, man. That is I'm scary. glad that I don't have a child that I have to nourish. That's a really good warning. Thank you. I, Lauren comes in with the funnies and I come in with the downers. Well, I feel like I'm like, I'm trying to, to change it up here and there. But I mean, there is like, I still stand by, even though we had a fun episode with hot talkies and everything, like you can't eat that. Like there was some serious stuff that we read about. Like you can't just eat that and just do what you want with it every day. Like it's not, it's clear as day when you're eating it, it is not good for your body, like you feel yeah. reflux immediately. Like it's- And it's so artificial, you know? It's so artificial, but there's like a sensation situation that like- And honestly, I didn't even like Takis that much. I have so many bags of Takis now in my house yeah, and I just we, want to throw them out. Like I that was not my favorite. Giving, well, we I gave several of them out. My poor brother, like it's actually Ruben was really smart about it. Cause I'm like, oh, these Takis were like inchworming away. And he's like, Lauren, I can only eat so many every so up. You know, so he was staggering them. I think we, had, I think there was some that we ended up throwing out. Then we gave some to my sister and she was like, I hate these. But we were like trying to give them away. Um, yeah. It depends on the flavor and stuff too. But yeah, you just got to be careful. Like I, I don't hate a hot Cheeto. Like I'm not going to. Yeah, like same. I would rather a hot Cheeto than a Taki. Yeah. And honestly, one of my, our audibles for to, um, this week for me is a spicy thing that I actually like probably could eat every day. And I purposefully don't. Yeah. So same. It's just one of those things, but you um, just have to have a little self-control and you know, it's harder for some people than others. Agreed. But guess what? Today is not about the spicy foods. Today's <laughs> such an interesting topic. So yes, I, um, we're going to shout out Harris. How'd you Hi like Harris. Harris, um, professionally, uh, I work for him and, um, I told him about the pod and he is originally from Bosnia. And so he racked, you know, Eastern European stacks and ironically, Simona had one of the snacks already <laughs> that was on the recommended list. Yes. Um, What's kind of cool about this is to me, they're not like insanely different than snacks that like we would probably grab, but I feel like, like, you know, in America, but I feel like, um, what I lo love about it is there's different ways to eat with these snacks. There's, you know, some different culture about their snacks. We're actually going to also talk about some taxes around snacks, which I think is an interesting topic. Um, so these actually vary from all different kinds of countries in Europe, mostly Eastern European. There is one from the UK. But these are snacks that we were driven to. And so we really hope you enjoy this Jaffa Smoky Halva Oh My yeah. <laughs> uh, episode um, based on the names of the companies that we're, or the names of the snacks that we're actually eating today. Right. And the first one <clears throat> is these um, Halva snacks. Um, also, everything that we're eating is actually pretty kosher, which is also indicative of like where they're made in the countries that they're made in. But um, I wanted to know from Simona, how did you, um, and if, if you're watching me guys, I'm reading on the right. So I'm not looking at, <laughs> so I'm not like trying to ignore Simona or myself, but I feel ignored. I'm, <clears throat> I'm reading, but how, so these are called <laughs> um, mini tahini snacks. Mm -hmm. Um, and so I wanted to know how you found these Simona, because these were the snacks that she had had first yeah. before we decided to even do this episode. And then she waited for us. To right. <clears throat> um, uh, let's see. How did I, I think I've known about Halva for years. Um, I don't think that it's like particularly popular with Indian people, but it's, you know, I don't know. I am always fascinated by different snacks and I'm like, oh, that's an interesting flavoring. And but just with 
all the Middle Eastern food I've had, like everything has tahini or there's some sort of tahini sauce. So I've been cooking with tahini for a while. And that seems to be like the thing that people are using in desserts more. Like they'll do like uh, brownies with tahini. That makes sense because you watch these like intense cooking shows. Yeah, exactly. So and I personally, I'm always trying to really like tahini and I love the first taste of tahini. But then there's that bitterness that comes in with you know, sesame. And it's also tahini is one of the main ingredients in hummus. Um, and I don't particularly like hummus. I I know, I know, I know I I've tried, there's only like one hummus that I can enjoy at times. And it's like the Mediterranean one from Trader Joe's. But anyways, so I've been fascinated with halva for years because I was like, as an adult, like my changes are growing. I like different things. So I, of course, just started (laughs) searching for halva. This was a pandemic thing too. Yeah. She was really going in on the pandemic and ordering food like nuts. Yeah. yeah. And then I found this thing called halva boutique on Instagram because I buy everything off of Instagram. And uh, I ordered like... I don't know, probably like two pounds of halva of different flavors. (laughs) Uh, This is, this is me. This is my similarity with Lil Xan. Like I do buy in bulk and then I regret it, but sometimes you get a better deal. So it's still in my fridge. I don't, I did not love that halva, I have to say. And I tried all the flavors because I got like some variety pack. Mm. There's some, it tasted a little old. Okay. And it's from, and it, they make it fresh. So I wonder if it's just, that is a, a taste of halva that it yeah. can taste a little stale. Um, or, you know, is it that particular batch? So that's why I'm super excited to try these little prepackaged small size snacks that we found on Amazon. Because I also think that like that halva, since it's fancy halva, it comes in like a block that's, yeah, it's, it's not very block or it's something circular is what I was. Yeah, it looks like halva. a cheese wheel essentially. Kind of, yeah, a good like a a, a good halva. They'll yeah, say, like a like, gourmet. Yeah. So, so I know that halva boutique is gourmet and whatever, but sometimes you just want to like snack size and not have to like cut yeah, into. And these are like mad snack size. They're super cute. They're pistachio, vanilla, or cocoa with cocoa bean. And, and they're like, wh- how big would you say this? Is this like a small Snicker size snack thing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And yeah. they come like Lauren said. What were the three flavors? Vanilla, sp- pistachio, and then like a cocoa uh, flavor. Okay, and um, they and depending on what flavor it is, it's wrapped in a different colored wrapper. Yeah, you can tell. You could tell based on. And there's like a like in this case. I think the cocoa There's would be cocoa. red. Yeah. And, and vanilla this, is, this is uh, like white. a white. Vanilla, like a or vanilla. Yellow. They have images on them, even though they're in a different language. I do think it's interesting the nutrition facts are in English, though. So I, I like that they printed that on the bag um, for, you know, if you needed to know. Uh, obviously, if you have a nut allergy, this is not for you. Um, it's a traditional no. Middle Eastern fudge like confection. Is how it's described, and yeah, that it has sesame today. seed paste, sugar, sp- spices, and nuts. So, mm-hmm. um, and and it varies on nuts. They also, um, so it's it's very popular not only in the Middle East, the Mediterranean, but also in Central Asia. Um, and it's w- what kind of started becoming famous in America. The concept of like the nut butter. It's just a confection of that. So like they eat it like nut butter. So there's a lot of, there's a lot of wikis out there and a lot of articles on how to eat halva. Hmm. Um, What we're going to, and they like, this is here for those of you that are watching um, on YouTube. This Mm, is, it looks like a marble cheesecake. It does look like a marble cheesecake or like a fancy piece of cheese. Like you were saying, like the Mm -hmm. actual fancy version of halva like you know looks like a gourmet presentation um so they obviously like they push like the fresh halva if you eat this on the regular um they explain the taste to be uh a a, a fully savory experience they also tell you a specific way to eat it to like let it melt on your tongue because it has that like nut butter type so don't eat too thick of a piece like honestly these ones you'd even like think to press down because these are probably twice as thick as like the slices that I'm seeing on this wiki. 
Um, they say that this is an energizing snack to have. So be, um, it has, <clears throat> because of the sesame base, it has a boost of vitamin B, protein, and calcium. So instead of like grabbing a, you know, some almonds or something, like they'll tell you, to, like for some energy, a halva is considered that. Hmm. It has diversity to have as a dessert. So you can like, to Simona's point, easily mix it, bake it, <clears throat> and a lot of things. Um, they recommend pairing it with co Turkish coffee, obviously, mm. but, but coffee or, or a strong tea, mm. a strong black tea. And, um, and there, and then there's a lot of recipes on how to cook with halva. Um, this is so, very exciting. So yeah, I, I would say, um, if you really want to buy this, you can, you can actually pro in some stores, you could even buy it. like whole foods, I think actually carries this. Like you can buy this a little more regularly than just finding it on the internet. I don't, well, I mean, you know, COVID. Well, and I think that, harder, I think this company, Achva, I, I don't know how to pronounce it, but I don't know if it's this company or not, but I've seen like Halva bars, like chocolate bars. It's mm -hmm. like Halva covered in chocolate at stores. Yeah. Like, I don't remember which stores. You can this one more. Yeah. They yeah. Do, this is, this is definitely a distributor out of the, um, some of them I know exactly where they're from. This one, I mean, it's it's a, it's a Middle Eastern distributor, but they do like have an American, like, like I said, like their packaging yeah. stuff is in English. Um, it's certified vegan friendly. It's also certified kosher, um, which we know that those things aren't easy to always be certified. Yeah. Uh, I did. I opened the vanilla. Oh, so should I do the vanilla too? Yeah. Uh, do whatever one you want. I mean, the vanilla is like a, it honestly looks like cookie looks like, dough. It looks like nougat. Looks like nougat or cookie dough. Very um, crumbly looking. Yeah. Or even like a shortbread. It's about the thickness of a shortbread. But you can like, it's, you can feel it. Um, It's already melting in my fingers. Yeah. Like it it's, has, it's, yeah. It's like, a oh, very, you can smell the sesame immediately. Yeah. Sesame and vanilla. Are you having the vanilla? Too? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right, let's go in. It smells good. That smells good. Very crumbly as soon as you put in your mouth. Listen, you know how I feel about like Italian pastry candies. This is right up there with, in my wheelhouse, man. This is really good. Mm -hmm. I like this halva better than my halva boutique because I don't, it, this doesn't have that weird aftertaste. Because it's it, flavored too. Well, that was flavored too. I had like a lot of flavors of that thing and it is bitter. It gives you a bitter finish of the sesame. It's reminiscent of those sesame candies, you know, um, you get an old timey stores. Do you know what I'm talking about? Where they were like, it looked like it was honey and sesames yeah. glued together and they're crunchy. Yeah. And it was, so There's it's like a little bit of a sesame crunch, a little, like a, the tiniest speck of it, but there is one. When you yeah. Right. Like, cause it's because the crumbly the texture, nut butter, a nut butter doesn't have that. A nut butter mm -hmm. is just smooth. I love that. This is really good. And it's exactly what I was hoping it would be when I first got into my halva dive. That's so good. This is a good, and I feel like I haven't eaten anything yet today. I feel like that just spiked my, uh, I guess my vitamin B, but also some sugar. In my yeah. I think it, it's not too sweet. Um, and it's, it has a very complex flavor because, and the texture, right? It's crumbly, smooth. It could totally melt in your mouth. Um, and if there was like, if you were cutting it really thin, I could see this as like being on toast too. Yeah. They said to spread it on crackers. I, I didn't yeah. say that part. Mm -hmm. And they also said crumble it on your oatmeal or crumble it in your cereal. <clears throat> they give you all kinds of like breakfast. There's a lot of breakfast suggestions for this one. Yeah. Um, Thumbs up. This is I like I drank some coffee with it and it does. It tastes delicious. I think with these like small individually wrapped things, like you could put this in like a lunch as your like dessert to lunch and you would get that kick of you know the protein and things um from the sesame and but I, it, this small thing is 60 calories so it'll add up 
Yeah. That's not surprising though. It's like anything with peanut it's butter or almond it's butter. Condensed, though. It's very condensed. Yeah. I, I think that like, I wouldn't need more than one of those. Um, I don't know. That did it for me. I think one, one is the good one for me. Yeah. But agreed. Okay. All right. So the next snack was the high, <clears throat> the most highest recommended snack from Harris. He was like, you have, to, I said, what is like the one thing we have to get? And he said, it's smoky. It's the most popular. Um, so I want to, I want to point out something because Simona and I had like, you know, we, we, we tried to be as, uh, I don't know, um, regionally not offensive as possible as we're learning things about right. different regions and, and what have you on here. So there's a region though in Europe that's called the Balkans and it is, uh, is a peninsula, a geographic peninsula basically, um, in Europe that, um, stretches over a few countries and most of Bulgaria. So the Balkans, you'll hear it common that like some of these are called Balkan snacks we didn't feel like it was like appropriate to call all of these snacks Balkan, but if you're going to look up smoky, you're going to see the word Balkan associated with it out of all of these the most um, because it's a Serbian based snack. Now they definitely, there's uh, Israel and Germany have both. They also have other brands and other kind of versions of smoky that exist that are, are throughout Europe, but the original smoky brand that we are eating, which is a puffed corn snack is Serbian. And, um, cool. And, and apparently this is just like, so that's formally like, um, the formal like Yugoslavia area as well. And, um, and so it's just interesting because like these things that like this one, this one was interesting, uh, introduced in 1972 um, and it's still to this day, like one of the most popular snacks. Now, when hmm. we think of puffed corn snacks, we get a lot of salty in America with like buttery. It's more like popcorn yeah. or cheesy, cheesy here. This one has a, it's a peanut. Again, yes. we're dealing with a lot of nuts. So if you have a nut allergy, like don't even listen to this episode. You're going <laughs> to have a breakout. Um, and it but, comes in a red bag. Yeah. It's actually kind of a cool bag too. It's like metallic a little bit. Um, fresh baked peanuts on the front, which I think is funny, like kind of like you're at a like a baseball. Well, and it kind of resembles the shape of peanuts, peanuts in the shell. Yeah. Yeah. So it's but I, I don't know. I like I feel like they made it very American y looking. Um, in that like it's like fresh baked peanuts, like, you know, right. like selling them at the baseball games if we ever get to do that that ever again. Um, All right, I'm opening it. Yeah, we're going in. So I'm excited about this because this is. Oh, the nose is peanuts. Oh, it's peanuts. It's like elephants eating peanuts. Yeah. But it's also reminiscent of like peanut Captain Crunch to me. Everything is about Captain Crunch. <laughs> but it is very peanut. And it, you know, it's not as beautiful as like the picture. It looks a little more like shrimpy. To yeah, me. they look shrimpy and they actually have some spots on them. Yeah, they have a lot of spots. But they are definitely a puff. Like it's a. Yeah. It's, you know, it's a puffed out corn chip. All right, here we go. Ready, let's go. That's delightful. It just it's, tastes like a peanut in puffed corn. But it's not an overwhelming peanut. The no. After, after and I really taste, like the aftertaste. It's like, it tastes buttery and salty. After peanut taste is more the peanut taste when you first are eating it. You're just like, I could eat a whole bag of these. These are dangerous. Puff snacks are dangerous for me, I feel. This is really good. This is like great movie food. Like I would get a bag of this for like a movie theater. But because it's peanut, it has like, it's not just that like, but it's not like buttery. You know, like normally we eat a puff. I feel like it's like. And it's not sweet. Buttery. Well, mm -hmm. it's not. It's a savory thing. It's it's really good. I like it's it. It's super interesting. I get yeah. what this is. I get why this is. Addictive. This would be like they addictive. Should, yeah, they should sell these at baseball games because peanuts get are like a mess. Oh God, yeah. 
Mm. And we're going yeah, in again. We're going. <laughs> <laughs> These are good. Oh, I'm eating close to the mic. Sorry. Mm. Two thumbs up. Two thumbs up. Bag presentation. I really like this. Paris, you win. I didn't have any expectations either. I've had zero expectations of all of these snacks because yeah. they can't. Well, I mean, they look like something I would like, but I would right. like based on what they're made of. But um, in 2018, they won a Superior Taste Award. Mm. In Brussels. I, I like it a lot. It's like light and peanutty like and Smoke buttery. It. Smoke it. Yeah, smoky. It's nice. All right, what's next? What is next? So we are going sweet, savory, sweet, savory. So yeah. we're going to, this one was my most favorite one. And this is where we're going to start talking about taxes. Oh, so Jaffa. The, the Jaffa, Jaffa cakes. cakes. I think some other places call them Jaffa. We're going with Jaffa today. Sarah's called it Jaffa. So I'm going to go J- with the J sound. Okay. Um, okay. Jaffa cakes were us. Uh, introduce oh a lot of my facts are between wikipedia and wiki pages or the actual um distributor companies yeah Yeah. um so they are biscuit size cakes that were introduced by mcbitty and price in the uk so these two gentlemen in 1927 named after jaffa oranges so it's oh so they must be jaffa cakes i don't know why i thought they were jaffa well, I think depending upon your accent and how you read the J. How right? you read. How you re- <laughs> read the J. Like the no, J. I know. I'm just, I'm just kidding. Just not <laughs> trying to be ignorant. Um, <laughs> most Jaffa cakes uh, are circular, two-eighth inch um, in diameter. They have a sponge in them and an orange-flavored jam coating chocolate. So that's the taste and each cake is said to be 46 uh, calories. So, so they're about like the size of, you know, the yeah. circle that my hand we is can, making. We can open them as we're talking. Well, and I know about Jaffa cakes because of Great British uh, baking and show because they've, cause this is they've made this right. like several times, like as um, the technical where like they don't know what it is let's let so that's like a blind baking challenge essentially. yes i have to say i always love i feel like we've talked about this in the past i love a silver packaging yes you do over Ooh. like the clear that makes me excited for some reason maybe it's like the suspense i think it's the suspense you. plus i also think when something's in silver i feel like it's being protected a little different i don't and like the smell you did don't? you smell it yeah it's, it's it smells it, very artificial it smells like, you know, um, those, it smells like those, um, whatchamahoogits. It smells like those, that orange chocolate. Yes, the balls. Yeah. Yeah, but it, I don't mind that smell. Like, this smells old to me. Well, maybe they are. And look at your, look at the top of it. You can see that there's, it looks old on the side. <laughs> But it did, did come from the UK, came from Amazon. And as we know, Amazon doesn't always send us the freshest things. So I'm just going to say. On it. I have like a lot to talk about about these. There's a lot of facts. Okay. This one, mine says best before March 14th, 2021. So I'm about to hit the, you know. Yeah, same. So we got the same batch. Okay. Um, they don't, they're not as pretty as they look on the. Box. No, they look smushed and weird and deformed and they smell weird. I don't have high hopes for this. I'm telling okay. you right now. So um, let me let me hit some of these facts and then we can go in and, and taste this. So okay. um, these were trademarked late, which was, I guess, not a, it's not an, a good thing when you're trying to, like, classify the type of food that you make. Mm-hmm. Um, and in... So I have to scroll over to this thing about the taxation. So there is a thing called a value added tax in the UK or the VAT. Right. I always have to take out the VAT or like do something weird when I'm doing expenses for my guys when they go to UK. Okay. So the VAT was introduced in 1973, replacing purchase tax. And it's the third largest source of government revenue 
after income tax and national insurance. So this is like, this is so interesting. So this cake, um, I'm just going to like read this because it does it. It's so interesting. So in the UK, the, when the VAT was created, um, it's payable on chocolate covered biscuits, but not on chocolate covered cakes, <gasps> which sounds interesting because biscuits are much smaller than a cake, right? What? Yeah. But why? Like, that's so weird. Why is there a distinction there? So they're both confections. McVitie's, this one of the guys, defended its classification of Jaffa cakes as cakes at a VAT <laughs> tribunal in 1991 when they were like going in whatever to get like all of their trademark com- completed um, against the ruling that Jaffa cakes were biscuits due to their size and shape, which we both know like they are. They're pretty. They're biscuits. Right. They're small. Right. right. Um, and um, the fact that they were often eaten in place of biscuits. And we know that in the, U- in the UK, a biscuit has a, a broader definition than I think it does in the US. And sure. they definitely are eaten all times of day differently, like jams on a biscuit. Right. Basically. And um, so he insisted that the product was a cake and allegedly produced a giant Java cake in court <laughs> to illustrate its point. So basically like had a blowed up version of this to be like, look, this is more of a cake than a biscuit. Okay. So wait, I just to clarify. So I feel like I understand this. So they want to, so a biscuit can be a part of the vat, right? But a cake, you don't have to pay the vat. Mm -hmm. Okay. He basically took this and made it a huge cake. cake. (laughs) And I will say like, it's weird to me. It's a cookie. Like, well, and I just feel like Did he win or not? I need to know because I would rule against him because this is obviously a biscuit and not a cake, even though it's called a Jaffa cake. So I believe he lost. And okay, good. Um, I have, I I have to pull like the final, uh, so the product was assessed on the following criteria. The product's name was regarded as a minor consideration because you can call anything a cake. The ingredients regarded as similar to those of a cake producing a thin cake rather than the thick dough of a biscuit. The product's texture was regarded as being that of a sponge cake. The product hardens when it stales in the matter. Oh, wait, I think he won. The as a, as a substantial part of the Jaffa cake in terms of bulk texture is a sponge and size of Jaffa is more like a biscuit than a cake. No, he won. So based on the consistency. So because he blew it up this. in size. Yeah, he ended up winning to, based on like the ingredients and the consistency. But that's interesting because I mean, it's really more us that pays the tax. So I guess it was like keeping the price down for the consumer. right for the consumer. Well, here's my question. Um, and I guess like if I was to make a, a, a guess of why biscuits would be taxed and cakes wouldn't, I think that because biscuits probably last longer. So there's probably it's going to be out there. The product will be more readily available than a fresh cake, which would make sense to tax that rather than a cake. However, I think that this is, this is a cookie like this. It's, and I don't really understand. Okay. So he blew it up to uh, emphasize the textures. Yeah, he definitely went. So he blew it up. And so it was more of, so the rule, um, Cakes on the other have been regarded as a staple food when there is zero relation to the vat. I, I still don't understand why. I think it's, it has to do with distributing um, why they ca- they do it to the biscuits and maybe because they're a little more commonplace so they could get more. I mean, it's a big, I read that, it, you know, it's a big money maker. For, right. I feel like you can food. get mileage out of the biscuits. Yeah. So if I was the government, I'd be like, yeah, tax that. So they said it was considered a cake, meaning that the VAT is not paid on Jaffa cakes in the UK. As a result, they are charged the redu- the reduced rate of the VAT, which is 13.5%. The 13.5% is what incre- like of the cost of what we would pay is what we for would pay a reg for biscuit. A- mm-hmm. Yeah. Right, okay. So- well, that's interesting though, right? You always learn something I feel like about that's money. Very, and sometimes. I'm so glad I know what that is because I've been working with it for years <laughs> and I'm just like, okay, well, this is a weird tax that, that I have to deal with, with, um, England. So, so that, I mean, that must, 
it must cross over beside yeah it's a value-added tax so and maybe it, it's involved in layers of travel too it but is it yeah because the vat is always shows up um specifically in hotel bills there you go yeah but what's interesting is that in uh in cakes you know, I think it's just, I, I understand I, cause cakes can't last that long. They don't have as many preservatives. Biscuits can be shipped everywhere. This is they last for, I'm 99% sure. I, oh man, this is like, this looks like a turd of some, like a squish turd. Is, if you look at the top of it. It's so disgusting looking to me. Honestly, it smells bad. This is almost, I was afraid to eat licorice. I not. I'm not afraid. I'm just disgusted by this. Yeah, look. I'm not thrilled, but I kind of. I need Paul to bake us fresh Jaffa cakes. Jaffa cakes. Okay. Yeah. Let's just, let's just get it over with. Right? All right. Oh, it is like a soft thing. It's actually not that bad. No, you can. It's mostly the marmalade flavor. Yeah. Strong orange. Strong orange. Um. I would eat these if I was blindfolded because the presentation through <laughs> the wow, Amazon be, like, better about it. Then. Yeah. Like I wouldn't hate it. Like, but because it looks so disgusting and the chocolate is discolored on the top, like the, yeah, the chocolate looks like old and flaky. Yeah. It's, it's yeah. It tastes better than it looks. <sighs> Yeah, but um, but like that's hard to get like a good presentation out of that unless you were to dump like a bunch of fruit or something on top of it. That that's would not yeah, look it is hard thing on a plate, you know? right? And I mean, like unless they're like really fresh, you from the manufacturer, I'm sure that they like easily get discolored. I don't think there's any way that they look like because on this like the chocolate on the box. They look like a thin mint or something on top, like really cute. Well, they're um, on baking show. You have to do the pattern with like a fork. So you yeah. cover it with chocolate, you dip it, and then you do a little pattern with you know a fork. What I mean, it looks kind of, it looks Yeah, like... and that pattern is totally gone um, in our. Oh, it's just smushed like a turd. Like it's yeah. A turd. yeah. Well, yeah, it's a turd, guys. It's like a little circular turd. It does taste better than it looks. Um, For sure. But again, it's not much of a, you get the light, it's like a stale sponge. It's not crunchy and, um, it was softer than I thought. I thought it was, it was very more, soft. I thought it was going to be crumblier based on now I it. understand his argument because I thought it was going to taste like a biscuit. And in fact, it was a sponge. So fine. He won. Makes sense, but <laughs> fine, but the, it's, I didn't taste much chocolate in all I got hit in the face was with that um, orange marmalade taste. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right. Can, can we move on? We're going to move on. I would like something salty in my mouth. Um, the last snack we have for today, it's called a pizza cracker with a K. Um, and bright orange bag, bright orange shiny. Bag. Very like, I think this is going to be good. I'm having I'm an expectation. I'm stoked about these. So there's a, there's, um, there's not a whole, this is a Turkish snack. This is, uh, hails from Turkey. Um, and the ETI group that makes it, the company that uh, makes it is also from Turkey. Um, they are a leading confectionery company in Turkey specializing in biscuits. So we know they get taxed somewhere. Cakes. <laughs> Chocolate, crackers, and children's products, which I thought was interesting. So I don't know if that means kids. They're a conglomerate. Yeah. I, I don't know if that's actually like they're actually making children's products or they call that, you know, there's food associated with children's products. Hmm. Um, they are a private company. They um, have about 5,000 employees. And this is just like the jam. Like apparently making things pizza flavored are a big deal. Um, there's, uh, def there's like advertisements I've read that say things like Italy has pizza, but we have the smallest pizza in the world <laughs> or something in these crackers. <laughs> um, <laughs> and, um, there's no animal products used in it. So it's certified kosher. Cool. And so that's really, I mean, I, 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 I didn't find a whole, I have found more about the company than I found about the actual crackers, but 
I, remember, I think it's self-explanatory. Yeah, I just crackers. remember there were a lot of pizza, like, flavored things when growing up when in, like, the 80s. and Yeah, like, yeah. But I never, like, I would try them, and I never really liked them too much. So I Well, and I have like to say, these. of this, on the front of the bag, the shape of these crackers look like, they're almost like, it looks like kibble, like dog food. Right, it's like a triangular shape with a hole in it. See, I feel like they look like um, like crackers that you put on soup or something. Oh, like oyster crackers? Yeah, they have that. They have that. I feel like, and then when I opened it, it had the same kind of texture I thought it would. I'm getting a a nose of oregano, yeah, but very it's light. It's very, very light. light. Very light. Yeah. All right, we're going for it. I like them. I think they're cute. And they're very cute. They look like little fidget spinners. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. For the kid. Right. These are awesome. Hmm. You know, they have a very light pizza taste it's that hits you oregano. right at the end. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's mostly oregano with maybe a hint of tomato at the end. And when you first bite into it, you get hit with like kind of like a ritzy, buttery, like a Ritz cracker kind of butter cracker taste a little bit. And then it mellows into the oregano These tomato are so pizza good butter. In tomato soup. Yeah. Yeah. These would be really good sprinkled in tomato soup. This is really good. I Another two thumbs up. I could eat a bag of this. I could, yeah. I have two bags of these, so I better look out. Oh, me too. <laughs> These mm-hmm. are really good. <laughs> I said that like three times. <laughs> They are. We keep eating them. And they're so little. They're like a good size. Mm. Okay. I like it. This is dangerous, but I know these exist. But it's a very light pizza flavor. So if you're looking it's- for a regular American hit you in the face kind of thing, like um, what's uh, Cheez-Its makes them um, a pizza flavor. I think Cheez-Its is the only one that does it right, too, in my opinion. Yeah, and so the Cheez-It pizza flavor, it hits you. It's pizza. Mm-hmm. and But this is a very light pizza. I, I wouldn't say, like, if you, again, if you did the blindfold test on me and you said, what does this taste like? I would maybe say oregano. Um, I don't know. I would know that it was fully pizza, but that doesn't matter because it's a very pleasant taste. It is. But if you threw it in tomato soup, you'd have, like, a great pizza feel- flavor. Yeah. Because you'd have more of that tomato. I love it. You guys, that was the end of our Eastern European Jaffa, Halva, Smoky. Oh, my. I don't know yeah. the order we're going to say that in when we post this, but it's something to that nature. Yes. Um, But, I mean, Jaffa, eh, the rest yeah. of them, I feel like winning. Winners. Winners. Yeah. Yeah. I'm a big um, fan. I think that if you like the orange chocolate combo, then just get one of those big orange chocolate balls that you like smash to yeah. get the segments. Or just we should eat one bar, of those. A Hershey bar and drink some orange juice. <laughs> or put some marmalade in a Hershey bar. Yeah, exactly. I think <laughs> it would be better than one of these cakes. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, I mean, unless you're getting them freshly baked by my boo, Paul, then... That's yeah. different. They're not terrible, but they they don't look great. And no. We could do better. We could do better. Because we eat with our eyes first, guys. So every time. Presentation is important. My eyes are 300 pounds. All right. <laughs> <laughs> this is a fun episode, Simona. Thanks so yeah. much for snacking with me. Same. Until next time. Keep. Keep. Nah. Okay.